So you have probably clicked upon this video because you were in the parking lot and you saw this guy sitting there. Um, and sorry I missed you, but we get a lot of questions about the build and I wanted to take this opportunity to kind of give you a quick intro. Um, usually people are like, what is this? What do you do with it? Where do you go? So I wanted to just kind of go over some of the things that might have piqued your interest. Um, and I wish I was there to talk with you. I love showing people our build. So I'll go through it. And if you have any questions, message down below and we'll be glad to help answer some of those uh, curiosities that come up. Thanks for checking us out. So just quick glance, you probably noticed that there is a giant camper on the back. Uh, the brand is called Alucab. It is from South Africa. There is a California dealer here in Westminster, California. So if you have any interest in checking it out in person at the dealer, they are in Westminster, California, and the company is called Tiny Rig Co. Feel free to check them out. If you are not in California and you are looking for a dealer, the U.S. distributor is OK Four Wheel Drive, and they are located in New Jersey. Uh, again, feel free to hit them up. And if you are in any other states, feel free to hit up OK Four Wheel Drive. They will direct you to the closest dealer to you in your state. And yes, there are several, and there are some great builders around the country. So if you are not in California, don't worry. Um, if you're not in New Jersey, don't worry, there are plenty. So Florida, Oregon, Asheville, Texas, there are lots of great builders out there and hopefully you get to check one out in person. First thing people ask from the outside, what is this? So this is a Flame King 11 pound propane tank. Uh, we get it filled probably once a year, if that. Uh, we did fill last year for New Year's, um, and it was only half tank, and we had it for maybe six months at the time. So we're guessing maybe one time a year to fill. What does this guy run, you ask? It runs this. This is a Dickinson heater, and it is a marine-grade fireplace, um, and it's about the same size as this plate right here. So the nice part is it fits compact right in this space without utilizing too much, because if you notice, it is limited in there. So I'll go ahead and open it up so you can take a look from the inside. So this is the Newport by Dickinson fire heater. If you notice, it fits right inside. The reason why you see two exhausts on the exterior of the vehicle is because that is your intake and your exhaust. So not to worry, no carbon monoxide ever goes in here to really set any alarms off. And yes, we do run a carbon monoxide alarm just in case, but in this case, because all the exhaust goes outside, you don't need it inside but we run it just in case for safety reasons. All right, so the inside, just so curiosity sometimes gets the best of us. All right, so this is what the inside looks like. It's unfortunately a little messy at the moment, but I again, I just kind of wanted to give you a quick look since a lot of people ask, what is this? So, of course, we travel with our Nalgene bottles. This is 100% a must. The nice part, thing about a Nalgene bottle is it seals tight, so you don't have to worry about leaks. So if the bottle happened to be flying around in the back, you're not spilling anything. In the camper, we also run Damperid. This is to help with any condensation or moisture that sits inside here. When this thing is closed and it's really hot outside, the temperature rises. 
but when the temperature outside decreases too fast, you get a change in temperature, creating a condensation within. Um, this is actually our third one that we've run this past year. Uh, beginning of the year, remember when it was really rainy, it got very wet inside um, or moist. So we filled up two of these while we were uh, sitting around last year. So Damperid, not sponsored, but if you have a camper, RV, van, it's nice to kind of have to keep the moisture down, prevent mold. Some of the equipment that we use, this is a Zargus box. This is the K470. Um, it is our storage bin for our camp kitchen goods. Um, but it is industrial. It has a goose gear top plate so you can step on it and use it as a step coming in and out of the camper because there is no step on here. So Zargus is known for their high quality aluminum boxes. Um, they are an awesome product to check out if you're looking for dependable storage boxes for gear, for camera stuff, for uh, high-end equipment or your kitchen. Um, so Zargus, I put the link below, check it out if you're interested. All right, so going into the inside, oh, one last product that I use. This is a um, wood mover, I guess, for campfires. Um, it's got a long reach, so you can reach into the fireplace, turn your logs. It is a great product, bought it off of Amazon. Have to say, saves my hands and the hairs on the back of them, so great product to have. Um, California does have restrictions on campfires, as you know, which is kind of a bummer because there's nothing beats a real good wood fire. But um, I still have them just in case you go to campsites or campgrounds where there is a designated fire ring, and yes, you can still use it. All right, so going on to the inside of the unit, <coughs> um, we are running an EcoFlow Delta 2 Max. This is a pretty much 200 amp hour battery, which allows us to run all of our accessories. So we have uh, solar on top. We use Explore. It's a flat, rugged solar panel. So we have solar coming in from two flat, flexible solar panels on top. Each one of them is 115 watts. So again, the info below for it is Explore, um, and it's the Flex 115s. There's two of them up there. Those two charge. This guy right here um, keeps us going when we get to a campsite and we settle down. So that's what powers that. Everything from the lights, the propane, or sorry, the Dickinson heater does require a little bit of power to turn on the little fan. We normally run a fridge right here. Um, and then all of our accessories, which becomes a little excessive, but we run all of our house appliances off of this, which is absolutely amazing. An espresso machine, air fryer, rice cooker. Um, and we just added a breakfast sandwich maker, a Hamilton one. So honestly, it's a little excessive, but because we have the power capabilities because of these portable battery boxes, again, 100% recommend. All right, so the interior, um, we had a friend named Al make our custom interior for us. And why did we go with a custom rather than a pre-built, already made, standard, off the production line interior, because we have equipment that has varying sizes. And because of that, we wanted it to fit what we already have. We don't wanna rebuy new gear just to fit. So we asked for, starting from the back, we asked for a bulkhead that was long that allowed us to fit things like our camp chairs. So the camp chairs usually come in a long, bag and they're usually about maybe a foot by a foot so we asked for the bulkhead to be made that way our chairs can fit in there so that started off the build which brought the cabinets forward then we went with a um, shelving system 
the shelving system allowed us to do a two tier storage so we could put our stuff into little boxes and slide them in. So we have like our utensils or sorry, we have our paper plates, plates, cups, um, paper towels. And it really helps because now all of our stuff is stored away. And then we ask for the sliding doors because the sliding doors allow us to not have to swing out and get it in the way and we can still access everything we want. All right, so people kind of ask, where do you sleep when you're in this? Uh, the sleeping platform goes across the top of the camper. And nice part about it, there is a lot of space up here. Even though a lot of people say, oh, it's bulky. Well, the huge benefit is you leave all your gear inside the top. And that way, you don't have to take your pillows and blankets down. Bed's ready. So the sleeping platform is accessed through a hatch, which is kind of like your attic. And then you climb up and through. And if you don't want to go to bed yet, you can lift your bed up. And then now you have an internal sleeping, sorry, an internal sitting area um, with all your stuff in here to make life a little bit more comfortable. Uh, so again, why did we pick this unit? Because you can come in here if the weather is really bad, if it's windy, if it's rainy, if it's too hot. It's ideal just to come inside, hang out, and have your own little space. Or in the mornings, if you're not ready to go out yet, you can hang out in here before you exit for the day. So all in all, I know this might have been a little bit much as far as what uh, you saw in the parking lot. But this is just a quick overview. Um, I'm going to go through some of the accessories in the front if there are any interest to you and put the links below for the product. But other than that, thanks for watching. And hopefully if you have any questions, leave them below and we'll be glad to answer them. And again, if you're interested in a camper, there are a ton of them out there. So this is not the only one. But we went with this specific camper because one, it was made in South Africa. It's made of all aluminum. Um, South Africa has animals that are different from uh the lower 48 and for that reason protection was a huge thing um durability because this thing is completely sealed uh so we're not worried about weather this is something that you're going to find in alaska to outlast the weather out there um so because of all those qualities this is the reason why we selected it. Again, leave some messages below and we'll be glad to give you a, well, we'll be glad to answer them if you have questions about product or anything that you see. Thanks and maybe we'll see you around. The exterior of the truck. This is an aluminum folding table. It's got strut feet, um, the nice part about it. The tables are usually the first thing you throw in there, but they're also the first thing that you need. So being that it's outside and easy accessible, it could be the first thing that you use when you get to camp and it can be the last thing that you put away. On the top, these teal blue things, this is called Max Tracks. These are recovery boards. You can use them to level out your vehicle or you can use them to get out of sticky situations where it's muddy, sandy, too rocky if you're crossing some stuff you can use that as well um, and the nice part is each one of those little knobs up there help with your uh, traction the light bar on the front is a diodes ss5 light bar there are seven lights up there and we have combo of spot and i believe there's two wides up there so that way it can spread light when you're on the trail and ready to go the nice part about the SS5s is they are uh, customizable as for color. So if you are a colorful person and want to represent during holidays, you can go pink for Valentine's Day. You can go red, white, and blue for 4th of July. You can go green and red for Christmas, whatever you like. So whatever floats your boat.
On the front, these are ditch lights. These are the SS3s. These are spotlights um, that aim to the side of the vehicle, because if you notice, they're not aimed forward. That way, when you're on a trail, you can see to the side of you um, in case you are on a tight trail and want to know where to point your tires. All right, the nice part is the front of the vehicle. So this one is modified and cut. This is the C4 front bumper. The C4 front bumper Rock Runner series, this is made for high clearance. So when you are on a trail and you need to get somewhere that has giant boulders and rocks and you have to cross them, this is what's going to help give you that clearance. So most cars, maybe eight inch clearance. This is probably uh, right now, a little over two feet so no problem and yes this is a worn winch with the factor 55 accessory so um, worn is definitely a high-end winch if you get stuck somewhere you can use it to tie off and get you out or if your friends get stuck somewhere you can help them out and as mentioned earlier we do have solar panels on the top there are two 115 watt panels up top. So it's a total of 230 watts that goes into our EcoFlow Delta II Max. And the last accessory on the exterior is this little box right here. This is your shower cube. It pulls out into about an almost three foot by three foot room. Take a shower, change, use the restroom, or have quiet time in there if you really need to. But this is something that's super accessible as far as um, ease of access for an emergency. So if you got to pull over and use the bathroom and there's too many people around, you could perfectly well do so and they won't even know. So again, hopefully this kind of helps you with uh, what you just saw in the parking lot and you had some curiosities about. And feel free to leave questions if you want to learn a little bit more. Thank you for watching.